Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We've just finished upstairs with the accountant, uh, it's before lunch, which is good news and we can get on with it, some other stuff. But whilst we were in there, we got a delivery, that's right. The ironwork from DC Iron has finally arrived, so now we can get on. We're building the railings and the security gate for the side of the pub. And as soon as it arrived, or as soon as we'd finished, should I say, uh, doing the accounts, I rushed downstairs with a Stanley knife to split open the package to have a look at these silhouettes. Check this out. So we have some of the steel railings, some of the uh, bird cages and everything else. And then of course, we have the HB logo cut out of some like, pretty thick steel, folks. That's going to look really smart once it's all painted up and ready to be stuck at the side of the canal for everybody to see. Don't you think it looks pretty neat? So we've got three of them, there's one up there as well. The idea is two of these go against the uh, canal railings and one of them goes in this doorway or this little bit of an archway here just in there to prevent any unwanted intruders making their way around to the back of the establishment. But everything's looking pretty good. The canopy's out. The sun is shining. The tables need a bit of sanding and treating. They've gone a little bit green after all the wet weather we've had. But yeah, check it out. It's actually really nice and summery out here today. Which is uh, oh, bloody perfect. So I just need to get a little bit of brickwork finished off. Maybe some capping stones, four capping stones. And then uh, apply the fixtures for the railings. So once the cement's cured on the capping stones and whatever else, I can drill into the brickwork, put the fixtures on the railings and uh, get them installed and finish off the, uh, the slab work on the patio, tidy it all up, get rid of the old fence posts and that whole section then will be uh, finished and put to bed. All the beer garden will be pretty much done, apart from like a little bandstand area that we're going to do at some point in the future, but that's going to be a while yet. Because this week, I'm really quite excited that we have another welding project on the go. I friggin' love it! So I've briefly laid out the major components to all of the railings that we're going to be putting together. So we'll start with the gate. So that's kind of what we're aiming for with the gate. So the logo up there, hinges down the side obviously. There's bits missing because I didn't want to drag all the, uh, all the steel across. The latch, how we're going to put the circles in with uh, the, what do you call it, the little spiky bits on the top. Maybe not that close. Maybe just up a little bit on a piece of, uh, piece of bar. And down here, we've got how the uh, railings are gonna look from the other side of the canal. So in between the circle and the edge of the frame will be little bits of bar just holding that into place. Obviously painted as well. Top and bottom rails and frame to go up. Same here, but this one isn't gonna have a logo because we've got that great big tree growing up in the middle. So we're gonna arch the frame just where the tree is and build around it. Hey, keeping nature involved and then this will be uh, the final piece almost a mirror image of the one down there so we need to just uh, get all of our sizes written down now double check everything get things cut get things squared up and hopefully this is uh, is gonna pan out and I'll be able to get this put together this week Oh, this is a precarious moment now, chaps. We've got 
some of the steel laid out on the top of the table here and I've measured it all out and we're about to get the cutting wheel out and I'm going to start slicing up the tops, the sides and the bottoms so we can tack up the frame then once we've got the frame tacked up together then we can start putting the pickets in and finding where we're going to isolate and locate the central logo section so let's get the cutting wheel out and uh, get cracking with the knocking like pet oh there she is safety third air protection eye protection bit of a pain in the arse because I've got a bit of A fever today as well oh, making my eye making my eye really itch anyway this ain't good there we go So we've squared one side up, or at least I think we have. So now what we're going to do is break out the welder and dive straight in. I mean, friggin' why not? That's what we're here to do, isn't it? So let's get these corners welded up. Right, first we're going to have to pop the earth clamp on. Hoping it doesn't pull anything out of square. We'll double check in a moment. Then we've got the gun. <laughs> and then we've got the gas. So the gas is on. Yes. So, is this going to be okay? Like I said, double check. Got everything where we want it. All nice and square. Okay, that worked. Let's do this end. Yes. We have welding. Bottom. That looks good enough to me. Well, it feels like a solid piece. So now what I really need to do is slide the whole shebang across, remove the magnets. Well, it doesn't fall off. <laughs> That's a good start. And then we'll pull it over here. Oh. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do the other side. Yeah, so now we've got some weight welded on. We can push that over. There we go. So if I bring you down here, I'll just show you what I mean by different size 
So this section down here, because the bars are slightly different, we've got a 30mm and a 40mm, so we have to make sure that we've got 5mm space either side and it's evened out nicely. And then the top rail you see is thicker than the bottom rail to make it more substantial on the top, so I think. There we are. So we have the frame roughed out. It's roughed out. And to help us square it up a little bit more, what I'll do is uh, start to put some other bits on, uh, like some of the pickets and the centre um, doodly do. And then hopefully all of that, when it's all cut to size and everything, will help us square it up. So I'll measure corner to corner, pull it all in, weld it, tack it, doodle do, and it'll all be tacked before we go ahead and then we'll just finish off all these welds. So I'm gonna go and cut a few pickets and get them into position. Ha 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 they say, make your mistakes early on on a project like this. <laughs> Anybody spot the mistake here? Top rail, bottom rail, I put it on upside fucking down. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I've only got the one weld to grind off. What a donkey! Let's try again then, daft lad. Try again. What a palonka! Come on, there we go. Well, I've done worse. I've done worse, he says. She is suspended under her own weight. Just might need a little twist that way. We could take that up with the other um, rails, I think. Uh, but yeah, there we are. She is suspended. Hey, we're getting there. Come on. Just a little bit of a twist into her. Nobody's gonna notice. Really, really, really starting to come together now. Just chuck this stuff out of the way and I'll take you up the top for a peek. So, we are beginning to get a good idea of what the actual railing is going to look like. So, these will weld onto there, give us a bit more support on the edges of the uh, circle. It just so happens to fit perfectly. I've got two little stumps to go in there as well to hold this into position and then for the colour scheme I'm thinking all the railings in the square bar are going to be black and all the baskets and the logo in gold or brass coloured paint. I think it's going to look spectacular. It's coming on alright isn't it? I am pretty chuffed with this. So all I've just done there is uh, I've trimmed some pointy pieces of steel to fill in the gaps at the bottom and uh, I just need to pick up the welder now and pop these last few pieces on in position. That one's a little bit uh, short but it's alright. We can work with it. If it's a bit short, we can just fill it in with weld, grinder and paint. Makes me the welder I ain't, baby. 
because there's going to be a lot of grinding on this one. Hell of a lot. And a lot of paint. <laughs> but I am overall really quite impressed with the first ever um, iron railing. Oh. That's how good my welds are, just come straight off. Quite impressed with my first ever iron railing. How's that? Oh, that's got in. That's got in. Very chuffed indeed. I don't think I've got this welder 100% set up in a sweet spot. And I haven't cleared, cleaned the steel. Well that's the glory of MIG, right? You don't have to get rid of all the, uh, all the mill scale. Just weld on top of her. Oh, there we go. So I've just got to weld the back side of that, folks. And then I'm going to take this down. I'm going to hit it with the grinding wheel to get rid of all the rough spots. Notice I've missed a weld there as well. Can I do it upside down? Not very good at this upside down business. Oh my god, that was awful. Did you hear the racket? Oh, it looks horrible as well. Yeah, I'm not very good at welding upside down. Anyway, just finish the back of this off, and then I'm going to hit it with a grinder. So I've just been into the beer garden with it to test it for size. Uh, there are a few customers in there, so I didn't film, because obviously it is actually an intrusion for some people. I don't know why. But yeah, there she is folks, and I must say, she fits in the slot just to boot perfectly. So if I position that like that, I think that will make a beautiful thumbnail for the video. And now I just now have to wait for Gemma, gotta look like one of minstrels, don't I? I'm gonna to have to wait for Gemma to come down and pick me up, uh, and then when I get home, I'm gonna try one of those vacant gestures that were sent over by Dudes Brew, and uh, boy, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that one's kinda like her. What, you got one of the chickens? Yeah, but then I dropped her. Oh yeah, she's down there, look. the grey one, she's the only one out. What's her name? Um, I think she's Betsy. She's Betsy. Me looking for strawberries. Are there any in there? I can't really see, cause the leaves are prickly. I can oh, tell I think... They are prickly, aren't they? Yeah. Look at the size of them ones, though. They're green still. They're going to be humongous. Why is it chicken? Oh my gosh, they are massive. Let's hope that the slugs don't get to them first. Oh dear, normally they do. Bloody slugs. Is that one just after they get the water? That comes straight away. What? Hmm? What are you getting? Just some water for it. Oh, for the chicks. Yeah. Let's have a look, Abs. Pick her up. Are you going to bring her down here so we can have a look? She's going to fly away. Oh my god, don't <laughs> put her on there because I'm just about to do a beer review on there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she found you. Does she have some of that water? She is. <laughs> Are you thirsty, oh, chicken? They're friendly, aren't they? Well, that one is. Oh, she's 
found some water. <laughs> She's drinking it. She oh, must have been super thirsty. Was the water thing away. empty? Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Let's go water. <laughs> there we go. Oh, they must have been thirsty today. How long's that been empty? It was full on Saturday. What are we on today? Sunday. Tuesday. It must have just dried out today then. Be careful. <laughs> we better be careful. It has been really dry though, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Should we take you up to the other chicken? Yeah, watch her go for a run. Come on. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Chance, don't eat the chicken. Chance. You're eating them chickens. I can do cartwheels on concrete now. Yeah, be careful that you don't put your hand in the chicken poo. Ew. I love Oh, that's super. <laughs> right. Well, we've got cheeky little Abigail behind us picking all the berries, which I was hoping to use to make a tayberry hefeweizen. Uh, Have you? Shall we share one? Yep. You just put the chicken on there as well, so have I got to eat the chicken there? Uh, no, not there. On the table? Yeah, but it was there. This one's got a brown bit on it. Mm. I'll have this one. Mm. A little bit sour. A little bit sour. So. Now it's sour. Um, I'm going to try some of Richard's beers. So we've got the Pogue Mahone Stout, which I think somebody said means mind your own business or something in Irish or something ruder than that. Uh, we've got the Warp Speed IPA and we've got the Bacon Gesture clone obviously using my recipe. So I'm going to crack this one open. There we go. We're going to get it poured out into a glass. You'd like some. Yeah, I'm going to try a teeny bit. We've got a bit of sediment in there. Not a bad thing, but we may as well keep it in the bottle if we can help it. So this come out, this come out 4.2, a little bit stronger. Looks the part. It smells a bit more yeasty than the vacant. I'm not getting that. Uh, it smells like every single beer and nasty, the raspberry yeah. on the floor. Pick it up then, darling, because I don't want to stand on it. Just give it to the chicks. Okay. It smells like a nice golden ale, if I'm honest, but it doesn't have the uh, punch of the mosaic, which it should. So what I suggest is uh, maybe leaving it on the dry ops a bit longer. You can leave it on the dry ops for up to 10 days if you need to. So as soon as primary's finished, maybe three or four days in, put your first charge of half of the dry hop bill in, and then uh, two or three days later, put the rest in, and then you could leave it on the hops for 10 days before bottling. I do that sometimes and I do notice that between 5 and 10 days is the best, any less than that and you tend to just lose a little bit of the aroma while well, it's going for a taste. <sighs> yeah, very nice. There's a little bit of a fruity note on the back there, did you use 05 yet? I'm not sure. Pale Ale Pills. Is that Pills Malt? Yeah, it's clean and it's dry, um, but the vacant tends to have a little bit more bitterness than what this has got. So uh, maybe for your kit, uh, I'd just up the dry hop by 5% maybe. Uh, sorry, the boil hop edition, the challenger by about 5%, see if that works. And uh, I don't know if you did the 30 minute whirlpool below 80 degrees, um, but that's generally where most of the flavor of the hop comes and I think it's missing a little bit of that as well. So I can't really find the mosaic that you would get in the vacant gesture, but nonetheless it's a cracking beer. Oh, very nice indeed. 
It's a little bit more fruity though, this one. So I'm picking up, I don't know whether it's orange or something like that, but yeah, definitely a little bit more fruity. But yeah, good, more mosaic needed, so, and slightly more bitterness needed to replicate the vacant. Uh, I use extra pale malt, wheat, and uh, Cara 10. So I don't know what the pills is, but I think the Cara Gold should be a decent substitute for it. But any Cara malt around 10, 15, 20 EBC should do the trick. And wheat malt, not torrified wheat, it has to be wheat malt. Mm, very good, sir. <laughs> okay, so we've got the vacant gesture close but no cigar uh, finished off. Nice beer though. I'm not knocking the brewing at all. I'm just putting sun cream on for random reasons. You're putting sun cream on, are you? Abs? All right, then thanks for that, chicken. Do you want to get in, in the shot? Okay, yeah. You're getting involved, are you? So, what we're going to try now, I say we, Abby ain't having any of this one, it's 5.4%. <laughs> this is the Warp Speed American Pale Ale with Pale Ale Malt Munich and Honey Malt, Chinook, Citra, Equinox, and 05 yeast. So let's get stuck into this one, I think. Bish, bash, bash. Oh, it will be a good beer. You what could have put in these caps on. Well, if it's a terrible beer, then we'll tell him the truth. Nice colour. I do like the straw coloured beers. Yeah, like right up my street. I'm not a big fan of the brown beers. Sorry, <laughs> darling. Because I think you get too much of a raisiny note. Could be what you're going for, but generally, not my uh, not coop of char. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you like that? Does that not smell like every other beer you smell? Yeah. No. Because they usually smell the same. They usually do, don't they? But this one's got a bit of a more, bit more of a fruity note to it. A bit of yeah, a more fruity of a note. Definitely more of a fruity note to it. Why did you say note? Note, yeah. Oh yeah, it kind of works. Fruity note. So let's get stuck into work. this one, folks. And uh, go ahead, looks the pop. <laughs> looks <laughs> Look really my good. Leg. Let's get stuck in and uh, have a good swallow. Smells great. Yeah, <laughs> because it does. You always say it does. Because oh. you just said it. Definitely more IPA-ish. Uh, well, APA is good enough for me. In terms of style, it's light, it's got a really nice uh, fruity note to it, you can taste all the hops. I used to sit on beer reviews and pick apart the uh, flavours from the hops that you can get, but these days um, I'd just like to use the term nice. It's nice, I'm not going to sit here and try and itemise every uh, fruit that I'm getting out of this. All I can say is there's lots of them and they're all tropical style for me. It's not dank at all and it's not stone fruit. It's tropical fruits for this one. Mm. Stone and I'm really enjoying it. What I'm going to do is put this one back in the fridge because I don't really fancy a stout now about these two light ales. And uh, we'll come back to that one another evening I think and uh, pick it up maybe after tomorrow when we've done a bit more welding at work so uh, until then folks Papa. we'll see you on the next one yes my dear can we go on the swings yeah I don't smell one. you what